This video is brought to you by the good folks at KEH. Not only is KEH the oldest and biggest at what they do, buying and selling exclusively used camera gear of all sorts since 1979, but they do it well with integrity and both a 180-day warranty and 21-day return policy, free shipping on orders of $75 or more. Which is why, because they make it as futz-free a process as possible, they are our go-to whenever we are looking to fund new purchases by selling our own gear or buying that special used piece of kit properly graded and checked when we want to go quirky or old school. Check them out using the special links and 5% discount code in the video description below. Thank you, KEH. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And as I saw in my mind's eye, a wallet, actually, my wallet, flying wildly around the room backwards, deflating to nothingness like a spent balloon as I contemplated dropping serious coin on a whole lot of like a year, which I now have committed to doing. I knew I had to do this video. That is how to spend a tiny fraction of what I was spending for a dramatically smaller, lighter, yet very performant street photography kit, which because of the mount and both the camera body and lens ecosystem for it, would allow anyone to grow with it to do anything, anywhere, anytime in the future. That is, having one's cake and eating it too. Still able to accelerate, for example, the pay down of one's mortgage, no need to sell a kidney at all. And when the time comes, able to buy more exotic lenses and or bodies while still retaining the use of everything you'd already bought with everything else. No concerns about learning a new manual of arms or having to swap out all of your glass for a different mount or a new sensor format. Now, we are fortunate to live in a second or third golden era of camera gear with options ranging from multi-lens and sensor-equipped computationally driven smartphones through one-inch sensor compact zooms to micro four-thirds, APS-C full-frame and medium format fixed or interchangeable lens systems. And I believe that within every single one of these categories, there are compelling kits worthy of the title Gateway Drug to Street Photography and Beyond. But there are half a dozen or so critical moments in my own experience and thinking over the past decade with literally hundreds, if not thousands of cameras and lenses. I mean, I looked at my Lightroom catalog and oy vey, that bring me to these nominees for the title. One, a used copy of Sony's original 2020 full frame compact 24 megapixel A7C matched with two a used lens from among a handful of equally compact and performant primes. Think, for example, Sigma's jewel-like i-series, their 24mm f3.5, which we own, 35 f2, which we own, 45 2.8, which we own, one of Sony's super compact, moderately fast, and very sharp G-prime trio released in 2021, all of which we've had in hand, the 24 2.8 or either the 40 or 50mm f2.5, or the older but still tiny and wonderfully performant Zeiss 55 f1.8, which we also own and with which we've had great success. Although each does have its foibles, including the camera itself, but hold that thought. We're talking less than $1,300 for used A7C in like new minus condition from KEH, which at more than 500 bucks off the currently discounted new price of 1800 amounts to a healthy 25 plus percent discount. And we're talking less than $500 used for any of the lenses I've just mentioned, all capable of sterling image quality at anything like normal image sizes and viewing distances. The net effect? You gain entry into the full-frame Sony Alpha ecosystem with an excellent kit up to the task of everything of anything short of fast-moving sports and wildlife on the still side, anything short of long-form cinema work on the video side, and as close to a frictionless upgrade path as exists in the industry, a beneficiary going forward of the most ambitious, strategically and financially capable company in the industry, in my book anyway, with a vibrant secondary market for everything from cameras to lenses and accessories, because Sony 
got into the mirrorless full frame space first and was the most open to building it out with partners because it served their long-term interests. This is not a theoretical proposition, but instead, as I just suggested, the result of our own experience with Sony and the rest of the industry, actually, over the last 10 years or so. At one point or another, we've owned gear from all of them. Not only Sony, not only Leica, but Panasonic, Fujifilm, Olympus, Nikon, Leica, Hasselblad, and Canon. One could make the argument that either a full-frame Panasonic Lumix S5 II or a Micro Four Thirds Lumix G9 II is a better choice, as might something like an older GX85 might be. I understand we love Panasonic and rely especially on their S5 IIs and 1.8 S primes for our video work. The G9 II with Leica DG Vario Elmar 100-400 f4-6.3 Mark II, uh, an extraordinarily compact and performant super telephoto setup for what we do, which is urban landscape stills. One could just as easily make the case that some manner of Fujifilm X series kit is a better choice, which I also understand. The X100 series, for example, is compelling. The X100 Mark VI, most compelling of all for the way we shoot. The X-H2 series, compelling for many of us when it comes to video and stills in a true systems camera. And I used X-T2 was the camera back in 2017, which rekindled my passion for street work. The current X-T5 better in just about every way. One might argue instead that a Nikon Z5 or Z50 might be the way to go. I get it. Nikon is back, and they've got some superb glass. Their little 40mm f2 on their ZF is an outstanding combination, although too new to see many examples on the used market. Then there will be others. I mean, you get the idea. Assert that some version of a Leica Q is the gateway drug of all gateway drugs in the camera industry. And if you know me at all, you know that I really understand this too. It was hardly our first Leica, but we bought and love our Q3. It is the bargain of the three major Leica cameras I mentioned earlier. But from dollars and cents functionality, reliability, versatility, and shoulder, neck, and back pain perspectives, as long as one is willing to learn the controls and menu system, which is not much fun these days for any modern ILC system, save for Leica and Hasselblad, I'd say the OG A7C with a small fast prime as a starting point is pretty much unbeatable. Except for this. One. We just returned Sony's latest 24 to 50 millimeter f2.8 G Wiz, I call it, loaner to Sony, closing in on a month after we needed it for our review. This is because Claudia found it revelatory on her 60 megapixel A7CR. She didn't want to send it back, but I've already ordered a new one for her, so okay. Two, that A7CR with the same or most of the same ergonomic foibles, including fiddly secondary controls, quite small and still relatively low resolution EVF, and that Sony menu system, I don't care how many revisions anybody talks about, is still fundamentally, I don't even have the words anymore. The A7CR also has the same resolution, close to if not exactly the same sensor, in fact, is found in like his $9,000 M11, $7,000 SL3, and $6,000 Q3, with better autofocus than both threes and the original A7C, which on top of being $900 less expensive than the Sony A7R5 with which it shares the same sensor, IBIS processor, and dedicated AI chip, makes the $3,000 new A7CR a steal, relatively speaking. So let me offer an amendment to my initial recommendations or an addition to my initial recommendations to say this as we wrap it up for today, other than to suggest you take a look at all of the reviews we've done on these lenses and the A7C series over the years, I'll try to remember to put a link to that playlist down below. One, since, as I mentioned earlier, each of the lenses I've recommended has its foibles, the 55 1.8, for example, suffering from dragon level focus breathing and more chromatic aberration wide open than I would want, but hey, I tend to convert to black and white, so no big deal. The 2.5 or 2.8 maximum apertures of the rest, perhaps a bit too slow, or in the case of the Sony G Trio having significant distortion when uncorrected in software, the combination 
of any two of them costing at least $1,100 new. I'd say check your assumptions, use cases, and your wallet. And take a long, hard look at the impossibly underrated, admittedly bland spec, admittedly not that inexpensive at $1,100, non-G Master 24-52.8 short zoom because it is phenomenal. It's also significantly smaller, lighter, and less expensive than the 24 to 72.8 G Master 2 we already own. So small, light, unobtrusive, and optically superb that Claudia suddenly has no interest in our G Master 2. The 24 to 50 will give you more flexibility on the street for travel, general purpose, whatever, than any of the early lenses I mentioned, even when you buy a pair of them, because you never have to worry about lens changes. It is as fast or faster to autofocus than any of them. It has less chromatic aberration than the Zeiss 55 1.8, maybe a little less uh, distortion than the G series. And if you think you really need that 1.8 or F2 aperture, you may want to rethink it. You'll almost never have reason to shoot that shallow at the wide end. And you'll usually want to shoot closed down at least one stop, more like two at the long end, when doing portraits so that the eyes all the way to the tip of nose are sharp. Two, while it is true that with the A7C you'll have as good as, nearly as good as, sometimes possibly better autofocus than any of the non-Sony cameras I've just mentioned, depending upon scenario, good as they all are, the $2,200 33-megapixel A7C II and $3,000 60-megapixel A7C R have just about the best autofocus in the business short of Sony's own A1 or A9 III, and better IBIS than the original A7C II. You just might want to more closely assess your finances to determine if it is both worth the leap and you are sufficiently flush to make the leap most especially to the A7CR. You may be shocked by just how good the 24 to 50 is with the R, but how good the original A7C still is with any of the primes I've mentioned. And in any case, you may be surprised at just how long you will actually keep whatever version of the kit you ultimately decide upon, even as you expand your portfolio of gear. All of the gear I've mentioned today is that good, the ecosystem that complete and competitively priced. Just saying. A big shout out to KEH for sponsoring this video, a great resource for finding just this kind of gear. Check them out using the special links and 5% discount or bonus code in the video description below. Thank you, KEH. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, join the conversation in the comments section below because this is an exceptional audience. If you'd like help with a portfolio review, gear selection, finding or honing your artistic voice, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one mentoring video call via Zoom at 3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, please consider supporting our work by using the no cost you affiliate links down below, sending us coffee money via PayPal, or most especially joining us on Patreon, links down below as well. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for